Bonsoir. That is good evening in Haitian Creole, which is a combination of French and West African languages. I say that because this video is an introduction to combinational circuits, which will be the main focus of our next few weeks. An example of a combinational circuit is shown in the bottom left. This should not look new to you. The examples of logic circuits covered so far in this class have been combinational. In these circuits, the output is a function only of the current inputs. There is no memory of past inputs. This arises from the circuit layout, which has signals moving in just one direction, here from left to right. There are no feedback loops. Contrast this with the other big category of logic circuits, sequential. We will discuss these at length in the second half of this course, so just a very brief overview here. The outputs of sequential circuits are a function of both current inputs and previous inputs. To achieve this, there must be some form of memory within the circuit. In this small example, there is a register in the middle with a feedback loop that helps determine what the next memory state will be. Again, our focus now is on combinational circuits. This slide provides a summary of some of the most common types of combinational circuits. This is a preview of our next few weeks. Some do arithmetic, like addition or multiplication. Others do data routing, like multiplexers. Others convert forms of numbers, like encoders. And there are still other functions. The big point is that computers are built to perform specific tasks. Most of these tasks are rather complicated, like sorting a list of names or playing a YouTube video. These complicated functions are built from smaller functions, which are built from smaller functions, which may be built from these basic combinational circuits. And these common circuits are not magic. They themselves are built from the logic gates already discussed in this course. We need to be able to work in two directions regarding combinational circuits. Given a circuit, we need to be able to analyze it to determine what it does. Also, given a purpose, we need to be able to design a circuit to achieve that goal. First, let's look at analysis. The basic task here can be phrased as, given a logic circuit, find the Boolean equations for each output, and or find the truth table. This really isn't any different than what we covered last week in the videos about converting logic forms. We simply work our way through these steps. Here is an arbitrary logic circuit diagram. One difference here from many of our previous examples is that there are two outputs. A combinational circuit can have one, two, three, or any whole number of outputs. Each output variable will have its own Boolean equation and its own column in the truth table. Working left to right, we note the logic expressions of the signals leaving each gate. Up top, this gate is anding the inputs a and b prime, so the expression a b prime. Next is the NOR gate, which produces a or b or c quantity complemented. Then this OR gate produces this final equation for output q. And this AND gate produces this equation for R. Whenever possible, we like to simplify the Boolean equations. This can be done through the rules of Boolean algebra, as shown here. With Q, we first apply De Morgan's theorem. Then we factor out B prime. Then we apply rule 11. And finally, we distribute the B prime to leave the equation in SOP form. With R, we again start with De Morgan's theorem. Next, we notice C prime ended with C prime, which leaves us with just one C prime, providing this final equation. Compared with the original equations for Q and R, these ones are a little easier to understand and certainly easier to make a truth table from. That's what we do next. We see that R is only true in the case where all inputs are false. We also see that Q is true for these three rows. 
So what does this mean? What is the circuit good for? Those questions are impossible to answer without context. As previously discussed at length in regards to interpreting a sequence of ones and zeros, it's all a matter of interpretation. Perhaps the logic circuit helps control a video game, with Q and R representing lights that turn on when buttons A, B, and C are pressed in certain combinations. Perhaps the logic circuit helps a computer's processor control which peripherals are activated depending on what file types are being processed. There are an unlimited number of applications of binary signals, and thus an unlimited number of ways to interpret the function of a combinational circuit. Thankfully, in the upcoming design videos, we will be working to accomplish a specific purpose, which necessarily means we have a guiding context.